Today is a new day for the American people. Today we have America great again. We have the God, we have the Almighty Donald Trump as our master. <laughs> Welcome to this very special edition of the Geeking Off Podcast, folks. Coming to you live on a Friday night. I think this is the first time we've ever been live on a Friday night. And tonight, we have a different guest co-host. Go ahead and say hi to everyone there. Mr. Tommy NC 2010. me Tommy in C twenty ten of the night And and Tommy likes to sing. He likes to sing a lot, don't you Tommy? Well sometimes. I love to sing. I love to sing and I like to shoot I yeah I can turn him down too. <laughs> okay. So we've got some interesting topics that I wanted to bring up some stuff that's been under my skin some things that have been bothering me as of late kinda I just need to talk about them that's what's up so our first item on the agenda is of course as most of us know we have a brand new president Donald Trump the most hated candidate during the election t- season. Everyone hated Donald Trump like a YouTuber. They hated on Donald Trump just as bad as they hated on a YouTuber named Tommy NC2010. Do you think that's true, Mr. Tommy? Um, no, I don't... Because you have to remember in the end game. When things succeeded for me, people loved me in the end. So, I wouldn't, you, could, you couldn't relate me to Donald Trump because the fact is the hate for Donald Trump is by the thousands. And I would hate to have his trolls, honestly. Like, because in the end, I had people that loved me. And they, I had people leave loving comments and uh, just people that hate him just absolutely hate him and that that's might, it's almost kind of scary it's almost really really scary i mean like well, this is the best way i can explain it folks this is america for you where the butt hurt side of it is going out there you see this picture of this limousine here? Look at this. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw it. It's on fire. It's on freaking fire. Yeah, they're, they're just burning I, it down. And they, they, they break the windows to a bank. And what did this poor Starbucks ever do to have their windows broken? Unless unless they're... Cu- well, it is Starbucks, but that's beside the point here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what they do? Overcharge for the coffee? Give me a break. <laughs> Shout out to Tommy C. <laughs> oh my God! Catch thirty-three. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, out of all this madness and people going crazy in the streets, what's your opinion on the state of America as of today? Honestly, it's like America made a decision, and everybody decided to go. This is my opinion on what America, the the one side of America is. <laughs> They're acting like a bunch of bunch of bunch of butt hurt crybabies. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's ridiculous. One gigantic big baby, and you know a lot of people may hate on this, but folks, if you're rioting right now and you're spreading hate, that's what you are currently right now. You are a big baby that is pooping yourself basically fecal matting all over yourself <laughs> that's what america is 
worse right now. The you know, I'm a little disappointed because here's here here here's my point. Of I I never was like for one candidate or the other. It was just, oh well, you know, I could have gone either way with however the election went, but the election went the way it did. I, I, I don't I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. I don't understand it. It just blows my mind that we as as people are acting this way, writing, okay, I understand. Because we know if if it was the other way around with the the Republicans going out, be rioting and burning cars and tearing down limousines and all this other crazy stuff that's no. going on right now. No. No. It's, it's, it's just a big cluster. And it, it makes me question. I, you know, honestly, I don't know what's going to happen at Don, D- Donald Trump's in office. But you know what? Why not give him a chance? See what happens. Yeah. It might not be that bad. It might be bad. We don't know. We just don't know. Unfortunately. At this time, at this stage and age, I'm just, I'm just, I, I just can't believe it. I mean, poor Starbucks. That's all I'm going to say. Poor Starbucks. I guess, I guess, I guess people in uh, that particular area are going to have to get their coffee elsewhere. Because they can no longer get their Trump latte. I was kind of nervous because I'm seeing pictures of my friend. You, you, you know the guy Ryan O'Dowd? The guy I interviewed? Um, kind of, maybe. You interview he's a lot in, of people. He's over there. Uh, he's in D.C. and Crystal's in D.C. also. And I sent her a text message. I said, please be safe. So Crystal and Ryan are both in D.C. right now. So I, I'm really nervous for them. Right now. And I think this is the first time that a president, I don't know, at least in my lifetime, that a president went into office and people are tearing up the streets, ripping everything apart. You know, I I don't get it. And most people don't realize that, you know, it comes down to the government that's below below Trump. It's not like Trump is going to be like the almighty God. Well... You know, you've seen some of his. It's, it's almost like th- this whole thing is a TV show on Donald Trump's network. I'm serious. The whole thing is, is yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It's almost. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying, and it's insane. It, it's really insane how this is happening, how everything is unfolding the way it is. I made a video on Facebook, and I said. What's stop with the negativity? You know, we gave Obama at least eight years. And, yeah, we, that, okay, four and four. You get, put four and four together, that's eight. So, I'm right. Am I correct? Yeah, he, he yeah, Obama had two terms. So did Bush, so did Clinton, and so did the rest of them. They've all had, had many terms in office. And... I'm not sure if Donald Trump's going to go that far. Well, I don't know. Like I said, we're just going to have to see. This is almost like gambling. I don't know what to expect. I don't know if if if, if that you know if, if if he's serious about the immigration stuff and Liddy's going to have to go back to Japan or something crazy like that. And actually, no. Actually, well, somebody Lydia's said that. Well, not legal. That's the thing. <laughs> no, Liddy is legal. Yeah, it, it, what Donald Trump was talking about was the illegals, not the legals. Okay. What do you think? Do you actually think he's going to build a wall? I don't know. It's hard to say. It's hard to say how how this uh, whole gambling pool is going to blow. Hmm. Yeah, I do see your point there. But if you had to bet, do you, do you actually think that if he does just say what would you what would be your reaction if he actually did build a wall? Now me, I think when he said he was building a wall, I think it was just a metaphor for stronger laws on immigration and all this other stuff. I don't actually think there's going to be yeah, a physical I wall. Just, I think it's I think it's going to be stronger, tighter laws that where people can't sneak over the border. Okay. So so Diana Perillo, you can rest easy. You're not going back. I remember she made a video freaking out about all this and oh all the stuff what going question? on on Facebook right now. I mean, the feeds are just insane. Man. 
in a way, in a way, because of the way people are acting, I'm actually kind of glad that Donald Trump won over Hillary just because of how the Hillary people are acting right now. It's 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 bizarre. Well, she should be coming out and saying, people, people, don't do this. You don't see her anywhere saying anything, saying don't do this. She's happy that they're doing this because this is an image on Trump. That's what she wants to see. She wants to see people look badly at Trump because this is happening. It's her it's her people that are doing this. They're going to go, oh, man. Take your coffee at Starbucks. So yeah, I'm really I'm really kind of stuck right now. Is America going to be great? We're just going to have to find out. Like I said, that's all I can do. We'll come back in a year and we will see what our situation and what our scenario is. Because right now I'm I'm not I'm I right now I just see business as usual and uh yeah i just that's as far as i can go with that oh i have a subject (laughs) i'd like to talk about is it okay is it about the trump thing and no it's about something different it's about youtube you know what i think this would be a good segue into what i wanted to talk about i'll let you go ahead in a minute tommy but I wanted to talk about the future of videos on my YouTube channel. Right now, it's a new year. I want to do something new. And one of them is this podcast. I want to podcast more. I want to do more of this. I really enjoy doing this. And I'm thinking about going weekly with it. How does every Friday sound? Every Friday evening, you sit down at your computer or your TV and you enjoy listening to Samantha or whoever co-host. I'm going to bring on more. I brought on Tommy because he came in in the last show and I was a little harsh on him last time. I kind of chewed him up, you know, bit his head off. Right, Tommy? And I'm just going to say this. I'm like, okay, this is what folks, this is what I said to Anthony. I said, Anthony... Don't invite me into a Google Plus Hangout if you're just going to bite my head off. That's what I said to him. Okay. Understood. So, what is in the plans, in the works, for videos? Recent video here. We just had the new keyboard. I ordered something today. And this might give you a hint. Droid. That's all I'm going to say. I ordered it up today, so there is a project and a video on that coming in the future. Also, tomorrow, I want to play with something. The Mycroft is ava- Mycroft available as a Raspberry Pi image. I want to play with this. I want to check it out. So this is a, another video that you've got to look forward to here very soon. Matter of fact, I'm going to try to get that one recorded tomorrow because I really want to experiment with this. I want to see what this thing can do. We got our Amazon Echoes. We've got our Google Nows. We've got all this great stuff. And I want to see what an open source project is going to do to make my life, your life, or anybody's life just that much more better. And here's another one. My good old buddy, Brandon Hawkins from Brayhawk Tech. Good supporter of mine. Yeah. We used to get together once a week, usually on a Friday, and did this thing called Brayhawk Tech Live Chat. But over time, the Brayhawk Live Chat has died. I'm sad to see it go. And that opens now a new segment on the Geeking Off podcast called BTLC. Not Brayhawk Tech Live Chat, but Best Tech Live Chat. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the link to this Hangout, 
and post it to the Brayhawk team, and they are welcome to join us at any time. So make sure to check out Brayhawk Tech. And at the end of this episode, because this is going to be a short one, I'm going to play you a past BTLC from back in the day when we were making that bad boy go. Oh, yes. All right, let's get on this. Let's get on this website here for Brayhawk Tech. Yep, type that in there. Put that down. Control V that in that. Now, you guys are welcome to come in to the first return of BTLC. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring back Tommy here in a bit to kind of bring in a new feature from YouTube. It's called Super Chat for your live stream. So now people can donate to you while they're in the live with you. Let's go ahead and get Tommy back over here. So what do you think of this new feature, Tommy? I haven't heard much about it, really. I just, uh, I, I've really uh, barely known. So I, th- I heard that people can donate in comments now. Yeah, that's basically what it is. The YouTube gaming side of things have had this feature probably for quite a long time now. Even though I like the the gaming YouTube side. When you go live on there, I think the live pages act are, and are a lot better than the YouTube ones, in my opinion. Does it work with OBS too? Yes, it does work with OBS. It's just that you change the link to gaming instead of www when you share the link anywhere on the internet, which is it would kind of neat. So we're gonna I don't know, we'll see. I mean, throw me a buck. Yeah, hit that little button. And other things, YouTube. You uh, had something you wanted to discuss about YouTube. And since yeah. this is a live chat, let's chat about YouTube now. Okay. Um, recently, um, Catch Thirty Three uh, started, and Tommy C, Dead on Dave, and Colossal's Crazy have started their podcast. And there's been a war. There's been bang, bang, bang. Like it's basically like politics right now with Donald Trump. It's massive war between. Catch 33 and the beta podcast, which everybody can agree with me and and Anthony can agree with me that the beta podcast is not but not interested anymore. Not really interested. I have nothing against, you know, I, I listened uh, I listened to that recent episode today and it. Uh, it seemed to be OK. I mean, what, Catch 33 or the beta. It, it, it was baited. I haven't heard the. I haven't wa- listened to a Catch 33, but. I was kind of hearing. All, some, all I was. I was hearing some things was. about Keemstar. It sounds like uh, Tommy C is uh, using Keemstar. I think he's using Keemstar. I think. I think. Uh, I. I. I don't know. It's hard for me to say because uh, it's. Bo- there's both sides of the card, really. There's both sides of that coin, honestly. Mm. And you know, as I as I could see that. All that episode of Beta was with, with Colossal was just, in my opinion, Keem groveling at, at Colossal's feet and like, <laughs> come back to Beta. I miss you. You're my I, know, I, I, I didn't, I didn't really take I it that you way. so much. You're my best buddy. <laughs> I didn't really uh, take it that way. Was like, Why did you leave? This was our show, Colossal. That's all it was, dude. See, I didn't uh I didn't really uh, get that vibe from it. It's I don't know, it just I took it that maybe he was a little sorry for what was going on there, but I didn't get the vibe that this was some type of evil, you know. I'm wondering, do you think they may be actually staging this drama? I don't know. 
know. It's hard to say. I don't think Tommy... Tommy... I, I know him in person. Tommy C. A lot of people say, Oh, you... You know... How do you know Tommy C, Tommy? He's been my best friend since I had, like, 400 subs. Since I had only, you know, four... You know, like, uh, around uh, when I was on question. Top 2.0. Question. Have you, have you talked to uh, Tommy C since this whole colossal thing has gone down and thing he, with Keemstar. have you have you talked to him and asked him what what's going on here and see heard his side of the story on a personal level tommy doesn't really open up to me really we we don't really much we just talk about all sorts of things i ask him about stuff and he's kind of always busy doing stuff and we we kind of go back and forth and talk at times i tell him about thoughts i have and he gives advice back to me and we just that's basically it's like a like it's a one way two way conversation sometimes mm. gotcha now here's my my take on it it just seems like this whole youtube drama thing i mean you've been sucked into it you've been dragged into it i've been trying to kind of avoid it because you know i mean like everybody else I get I get jerks in the comment section too, but I I'm one of those people that just there's there's every time a a jerk comment comes on the channel, there's this really neat little trash can icon, uh, next to the comment, and uh, I've learned to use that little trash can. It works really great to uh, clean clean that up a bit. You know what I'm saying? Oh jeez. It's it, it gets it gets redundant sometimes because some of the comments, uh, I had to recently block one of mine because all the guy kept saying in the comments is Tommy watches hardcore porn. That's all the comment was. Yeah, I've noticed that guy saying, in your comments. That's, what? I noticed that guy in your comments. Yeah, it was like every video he was obsessed that you watch hardcore porn. And I blocked him. I said, please stop this. This is your warning. I'm going to block you if you don't stop. I'm going to keep doing it. And then he just said, I'm just going to keep doing it. And I'm like, block. Bye-bye. If it was me, I probably would have replied with, um, yeah, I do watch hardcore porn. You want to join me? Of your mother. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was a little a little sick and wrong of me. I'm sorry about that. And I've really got to close this page over here because these ads on this uh, YouTube super chat for streams. Super chat is a new way for fans and creators to interact during live streams. Fans can purchase super chats to highlight in their message. In the... So if somebody wants their comment to stay longer in the chat. They can pay for it? Really? People are into this? So, you're telling me trolls basically can make their comments last longer now. And here's, here's the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, and then on top of it, it they, they, can, they, can, they can dispute the credit card charge, and then they, 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 they get away with it, and they get a free comment on the top of your page. It just doesn't seem like a smart idea to me. No, it doesn't because YouTube should have a thing where it's programmed in. Once you set that payment, you can't dispute the you can't dispute the purchase. Yeah, that's going to be interesting because I know because I know in the Twitch world this is a problem where people make fake uh, donations of any kind, and uh, unfortunately. Usually it's bad, but some you know because somebody will pay, then they'll dispute the charge, and then it's it's been a mess. So I'm kind of curious to see how Google and YouTube is going to handle it when somebody decides to do a charge back and say, "Oh no no no, that wasn't me. My credit card was stolen." Come up with some excuse like that. I don't know. Should be interesting. Yeah, you basically donated a hundred dollars, and then you try to take it back, but you couldn't because ha. <laughs> YouTube has a backup plan. That would be the best way to go with that scenario. We don't need... I don't know. I guess, like I said, 
This is no, it seems like this this podcast, I've been saying this a lot. We're just going to have to see what happens. Welcome to the Speculation Podcast, folks. We're just going to sit here and we're going to speculate and we're going to just make stuff up. Welcome to Speculation Land. Speculation Land. Okay. i got to get that echo off my voice. Okay. This is Mark Haida. And uh, Mark Mark was invited in here into this live uh, live chat tonight, and he didn't show up. But, Mark, you are welcome anytime, pony boy. I have a feeling that I don't know if if Brendan's going to come in because Brendan hates me. Well, well wouldn't that be interesting? I I, I could yeah. I, I could entice he, him. I, I could I could I could say, uh, Mister Brendan at Brayhawk Tech. Is a Trump supporter. Is he, is he coming in now? Huh. Well, he, his background. <laughs> I think he probably would be a. Uh, you know, I would. Okay, uh, Brendan, support yourself. Come in here and defend yourself. And you know, defend yourself because your background makes me think that you are a Trump supporter because of you know your background. His website's so, blue, though. Huh? I said his website's blue. It's a democratic. Blue's blue. Isn't isn't blue democratic? Oh, he's he's Democrat. <laughs> I didn't know. Oops. I don't know. Look at the web guy, the website colors. I mean, it was red before, so he could have been a Trump supporter. Okay, now we're just ah <sighs> calling him out. Also, put one in the chat if you want to see me and Brandon settle this tonight between our drama. Kiss and I'll say and here what, what happened. I made a video. I had a disagreement with Hamza. And basically, Brendan called me fake and then ran off. He said he would be my friend, and he lied to my face. And ran off, and that's not what friends do. But he was a friend of a friend. He was your friend, Anthony. So, you know, I was I, 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 talking I, to Brendan. I, I, I can't control... Over. I can't control the actions of my friends. I can't control the actions of you, Mark, or anybody else, really. So what what what, what can I do? You know, there's there's not much I, 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 I can and can't do. It's, it's just kind of the way it is. Anthony's the kind of guy who just sticks his hand out and's like, I don't know what to do. I'm easy going. <laughs> Am I, huh? As they say, sometimes I just don't give a fuck. But that's, I've always been that way. It's just the way I roll. Get it? Roll? This is how we roll. Ho, 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 ho. Okay, folks. Um, We're about in the half hour mark now. To make this episode an hour long, what I'm going to do is play one of my favorite classic BTLC episodes it is called did apple rip off gnome 3 it is one of my favorites so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and call this up here get it ready for us right. and we're going to go ahead and play this for the rest of this podcast and i will come back after that and say our goodbyes and for you mr tommy before we get on out of here any last words of goodbye before you take off? I just want to say thank you so much for inviting me on here, Anthony. I really do appreciate it. And uh, this the geeking. This is a you're watching the Geeking Out podcast with oh, the one and only Anthrit. Anthrit, the the one on of auto. anime consumption and he Japanese culture that. and sake sushi ass kicking. And he is a man that is literally bona fide. And that speaks for another thing, too. So stay tuned, because right now, on the editing floor, we've got Japan Vlog 29. 
I'm going to try to get that one wrapped up this weekend. So look forward to here in the next couple of days coming to a YouTube near you. So thanks for joining me, Tommy. It was great having you here. You have a good night and good bites. You too, buddy. I'll see you later. See ya. And let's go ahead and play this special BTLC we're live. from Welcome, back in the day. ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, kittens and mice, to the not-so-new but newly coined BTLC, not to be confused with bacon, lettuce, and tomato or Brayhawk Tender Loving Care. Sure, we'll provide you some tender loving care, but that's Brayhawk Tech live chat because, as I said in the previous stream earlier today, it's Brayhawk Tech. It's live, and it's a bunch of clowns sitting in a Google Hangout chatting. So that's what we're doing today. Today, as always, we've got all but one of, uh, of the crew. There's always got to be one missing. He's away on, a, on another commitment. Uh, starting off, uh, going down the roster, as usual, we got Anthrit Oni Re- oh, oh, my goodness, I'm going to screw this up already. Anthrit Oni Ravato. I really wish you had a more easily pronounceable name, otherwise known as Vlog Montana. <laughs> And for the first time, and I believe, crap, ever, ever since I've been doing this show, uh, we've got Jason Goyette with us. Uh, he's only hung out with us a few times in the past, but uh, ever since I started this uh, uh, live podcast uh, group chat every weekend, he hasn't uh, been able to join us. So, uh, everybody, if you're in the audience, give a warm welcome to Jason. Hopefully, we can keep him around a little bit more often. And, of course, my pixelated friend there in the middle, that would be uh, young Mark Hyder coming at us out, all the way out from London. And, uh, and uh, as always, it's a pleasure to have uh, Nathan Alvarez all the way from California, one of our uh, head writers. So, as I said earlier in another stream today, we are, uh, we're, we're, all we're doing is recoining, returning, or renaming some of the uh, shows that we've done here on uh, Brayhawk Tech. This one in particular, BTLC, Brayhawk Tech Live Chat. Uh, this is where we, uh, uh, once a week, uh, the crew in, uh, in Brayhawk Tech get together for, uh, yes, Eddie Moon's and, Clowns. We're tracking your and comments. it's coming back. Uh, we'll get together. Coming uh, back. A bunch of clowns getting together for, uh, for, some, uh, for some tech talk, for some chat. Don't want to use other people's term. We'll come up with our own here eventually. Um, today, speaking of clowns, today's topic is whether or not Apple uh, ripped off Gnome 3. Is no sooner had uh, had Apple released in its uh, last this earlier this week's uh, WWDC 2014, no sooner had it released uh, its new preview of uh, OS 10 Yosemite, which will be coming out this fall, the Linux community jumped all over it, screaming that it's uh, that it copied uh, specifically the uh, the GNOME 3 environment. So, and the one that brought this to my attention is uh, is Anthony. I know he's been fighting at the bullet. He's been just like a Race horse in the pen, just ready to get out of the chute, like a raging bull in a rodeo, just sitting there. Yeah, but yeah, that has that hasn't blown you, not blown his blown his load in a long, long time. Raging, raging <laughs> bull in a rodeo. That was right, an interesting so. choice of words. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Anthony, we'll we'll go ahead and uh, since we're already we're the show's probably going to run a little bit over time tonight since we're getting off to a late start due to some. Uh, last minute uh, technical issues so but anyway we're going to go ahead and jump right into it maybe we'll even get in a few other things tonight but anthony i know you're biting it i know you're chomping at the bit so go ahead and uh floors yours buddy all right first of all right down here chat with us at www.brayhawk.com forward slash live and we've got a a new irc chat client so if you want to be able to get your chat comments um directly to us so we can be able to see them right here on my screen Full screen and my second monitor here. Okay. Unfortunately, that chat's no longer available, but we do have the YouTube chat, so feel free to use that or the comment section below. That was about how the new Yosemite is, um, you know, kind of stealing a little bit, you know, taking a little bit out of the Apple um, out of uh, out of the GNOME project, um, and. It was a big, big deal. I mean, I will say, okay, in Apple, there are some similar, different similarities, especially, for example, the black title toolbar at the top. It goes up above the bar. 
Um, there is a difference there. For example, in GNOME 3, we do have the activities and places and the program running. But so in Apple, they have files. they have their finder. They have the title bar of whatever app you got open, such as file, edit, and history. But th that's that's okay. That's similar. But for example, the new Safari web browser is exact, almost exactly just like the GNOME web, which except for one exception that they have the closed minimize um, icons right in front of it before uh, you see the the address bar. One of the biggest ones, and totally is, looks exactly the same, is the Maps app. It looks exactly like GNOME Maps. Exactly. The program, there's no difference. They look exactly the same. Um, um, other things that they have done here, um, I'm sure some of you have heard that <clears throat> they're going to be doing this new feature called um, Handjob. Oh, no, no, what? No, that wasn't the proper name. <laughs> handoff? That was handoff. Yeah, that's right. It's called Handoff. Oh, man. Now, the Linux that's community has, has already... <laughs> Hold on a second. Please tell me that was live because that... Yeah, that was. Was. Of course it's live. <laughs> this oh, feature <laughs> in Apple's new... Ooh, it's innovative. Is yeah. blatantly a copy of KDE Connect. I, I still say that um, which allows you to Apple's handoff feature is still a hand job feature. I mean, Apple has been jerking us Linux fans for so long. They're just jerking it, and then and then what are they doing on top of it? Well, let's remove all the USB ports. Let's 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 just destroy the Apple ecosystem and make our computers completely useless unless you got a bunch of uh, you know life support devices connected to it. Who are seeing these new features coming out from? Um, Yosemite. Um, most of the consumer market has probably no clue what Linux, GNOME, or any of these Linux type features look like. And I guess as a Linux community, we're going to be kind of pissed off because it's going to be a repeat of the past where certain features have been blatantly ripped off, and then people will jump over Linux or Ubuntu and be like, they stole that from Apple. Instead of looking at it the other way around, like this, they've had the feature before them, before it was released to the public. Okay, okay. I'm going to chill for a minute and, and just say another feature. Uh, spotlight Search? Oh, man, now they're ripping off Unity Search here. They're straight off ripping off Ubuntu now. Um, as you know, Ubuntu has a feature called Unity Search, which allows you to search things in metadata, such as um, anything on the Internet, so you can click on the Unity icon and it brings up a search which allows you to search anything in your computer and also allows you to search things such as Amazon, YouTube, Google, um, your maps, Wikipedia, etc. So as again, I think Ubuntu has had that for the last uh, three years, maybe longer. I'm not sure. Somebody correct me on that. <clears throat> Definitely not um, something new and innovative on Apple's part. Mm -hmm. Maybe they just see this neat little feature and they've got to have something similar to Unity which, uh, don't get me started on Unity, it's, it's one of the features I hate on Unity. And uh, if I was a Mac user, I'd hate to see. Oh, my oh, God. Geez. Oh, no, 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 thank you. Uh, I got 10.4 behind me over there on my uh, iMac. Yeah, I saw that. So, 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 I, so I, I feel you with uh, Unity. The, the thing of it is, is uh, unless you got something else, I mean, it's just it, it's the exact same argument we've been hearing for years and years well, and years. Well, back. Now they're also going to rip off Android. You know, rip off Android now. that voice you heard was Mr. Jason Goyette. Yeah. Jason, yeah, you know, just you're, just you're letting you know, Google, we miss you, bud. Come back, please come back. Now they're copying Google and Android. I can't believe this, Mac. <laughs> <sighs> Ah! Somebody why? throw him a biscuit. Why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to know why. Well, here's the thing, though. Here, here's the thing. You can look at it as, yeah, you know, c company A is copying company B. That's that's yeah. fine. That's I mean, if that's how you want to look at it, that's fine. But that's how consumers benefit is when you've got these two companies, company A and company B, competing. That's where consumers benefit. That's where people like you and I benefit because we get better features better results yeah yep. well a lot of the people in the linux community are kind of worried that if apple goes with these features for example there's no super patent or copyrights or anything going on with um the open source community 
Yeah. But let's just say Apple one day says they want to own it, and then they go over and they say, "All right, well, guess what? Goodbye, goodbye, no maps." Right, and you I got, mean that's you got to a, take that's, that down. That is a, that if you're is a, copying a, Apple, you know, it's gonna it could switch the card could switch negatively towards the Unix, Linux community. Right, and that's a legitimate concern. That is a legitimate concern. I don't think it's gonna go that far, but. It you could, might, and it has happened in the past. Some of this, some of this, might be a legitimate concern, but definitely not all of it, because we've we've heard this time and again, time and time again. It's the exact same argument every year. Every time there's a WWDC, every time there's a keynote presentation, every time they put out new software, every time they put yep. out new hardware. Yep. If, uh, if it's a new iPhone, then they copy something off of Apple. If it's a new uh, version of OS X, then they copy something off of somebody else. It's not the yeah. features of the implementation. We're, we're to a point now where all we're doing is we're copying off of each other anyway. Um, I mean, hell. What else can you add? What else can you add, you know? Sit, sit back, grab a bowl of popcorn, and just watch uh, Pirates of Silicon Valley all over again. It's a great movie, trust yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe they I, – I doubt it's, it went to that extreme to where they just straight up uh, blatantly – stole from the Gnome 3 uh, community and uh, yeah. whoever else. Uh, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. It, wouldn't be the, the, it certainly wouldn't be the first time that, uh, that they pulled something like that. But, again, <laughs> where it's – I've heard someone else say it once before, but, uh, you know, you're, you're using if – you're, if you use different pieces of hardware, if, you, if, you're, if you're on multiple different platforms and you're using one, and you think, wow, this has really got a great feature, I sure as hell hope this doesn't show up somewhere else you know what i mean so it, it, exactly there, there's so, a um steve what? jobs i think steve jobs was was notorious for saying you know he'd get ideas and then he'd build upon them he'd he'd basically rip them off exactly and then he'd make them better so I thought, yeah. like i said I, like i said before i think i understand why the linux community would be pissed i mean i'd be pissed too especially oh, when you're yeah. dealing with when you're dealing with open source features going into closed yeah. source, but at the same time, that is only going to benefit the consumer in the long run, because a lot of people, let's face it, a lot of people don't know Linux. The main, the 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 mass majority of people are not Linux users, so they don't know that these features exist. Apple can monopolize and and can capitalize on that fact and implement some of these features in their OSs and introduce a whole new market to these features. Yeah, Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, I, I'm willing to go off a limb here, but, you know, a part of me wants to say, you know, Steve Jobs has passed away, so maybe mm-hmm. Apple, maybe, yeah. is, this is my opinion, has lost his innovation, so they, they need to look outsource somewhere else and... Who knows? Maybe, maybe in the future, some of these developers say, as a positive note, as these developers of open source communities end up getting jobs, uh, not jobs, but, you know, <laughs> employment. They'll get employment at Apple and get a good career out of it. Because when you really look at it, when it comes down to it, um, Linux and Apple operating systems pretty much sleep in the same bed. Um, they pretty much are based off the same damn OS, which is Unix. Unix, okay. yes, yeah. correct. Old story, <laughs> very old story. So I guess I guess I can calm down a little bit. Calm down, Be a little biased here. Somebody throw him a biscuit. Maybe maybe we should look at this as possibly you know we could be friends. I mean, as long as uh you know we're not. Having colorful windows, I'm totally cool yeah. with that. <laughs> um, okay. What are you talking about? What do you mean? Yeah, you've never heard of them. We don't want to discuss them here on this show. <laughs> I think honestly, <laughs> honestly though, as long as Apple understands that its new uh, interface is gonna piss a lot of people off, oh, they're right. gonna they're gonna continue to refine it with you know future updates. I'm sure. The same thing they did with iOS 7. iOS 7 was introduced. Everybody went, you know, lost their shit, and yeah. and they refined it. I mean, they didn't completely change it back to where it was because, I mean, let's face it, that design was getting kind of tired. The, the the new design is okay. They just needed to mute it down a little bit. It was way too vibrant. And, I mean, if you look at Yosemite, Yosemite is 
it, it is very different than the one that they had before, but it's nowhere near as vibrant, nowhere near as in your face and as obnoxious as iOS 7 was. That's good. I didn't, I didn't I didn't take a look at uh, Yodelman. I was m mostly covering the iOS 8, uh, iOS 8. So that's good to know. So, are there any features that you guys do like in iOS 8 or with, with the with the WWDC? In iOS 8 or in Yosemite? <laughs> iOS 8. iOS 8. Uh, I like one. I have one that I like, which was the <clears throat> hand off. Uh, feature where you, <laughs> yeah. where you can, KD, that, KDE that connect. It's KDE connect. <laughs> yeah, KDE connect. <laughs> that feature is is uh, is cool. The only thing I don't like about it is that, of course, they lock you into their ecosystem. That's the only mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. I wish it worked with all phones, not just you know iPhones. But I get why it works with the iPhone because they want to keep you locked into their system because then you buy more products that means more money for them. It's just how business works. All right. Well, like if, like if the Android people have to use. Um, KDE Connect and mm -hmm. Apple got to use this. I mean, for example, an Android guy cannot use Canadi KDE Connect to talk to their, you know. Yeah, yeah. Their, yeah. Um, now, now, were you, you know. looking for a design change at all in iOS 8? Or were, what were you looking for in iOS 8? Was it a design change or just more features? Make uh, the thing stop crashing the web browser. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, because uh, I'm kind of a, I'm, I'm a huge user of, uh, of iOS yeah. with yep. an iPhone and an iPad and whatever else I have sitting around in front of me. Um, I was I was mainly looking for just uh, which which I'm pretty sh I, I guess I got. I mean, I guess I won't know until I actually get my hands on it myself. But I was just looking for uh, some just basic improvements uh, to the overall system in uh, in in iOS. Because uh, uh, there was yeah. definitely a lot of things that were just kind of half baked when iOS 7 came out. Yeah, yeah. And, and look uh, at the some, days. Uh, look at look just, at the uh, days uh, now. More sturdier foundation. More Did, sturdier. You know, not, not a sturdier, sturdier foundation now, anymore, is it, Apple? Uh, with uh, with, with some more. Some I guess I got that. I guess I got that. Uh, I guess my biggest uh, the biggest thing that I really liked was extendability. Just. Uh, the ability for one uh, for one group of apps to talk to another group of apps. I that's pretty cool. That, yeah, that's pretty cool. I thought that was really cool. Now, um, one thing I do like is the, the health, the the health, the health app, or like the health ability with the iOS eight. Don't don't that's, really didn't really, didn't really pay take too much attention to that because I don't really yeah. use uh, electronics devices when I'm when I'm monitoring my own health. I mean, I'm just I'm not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too did anybody yeah. did anybody else think that was interesting that they would introduce a platform for wearables yet they don't have an iWatch yet? I know well, that's what we, I was still we, not we thinking about. to see that yet. This is yeah. uh, WWDC isn't necessarily for brand new hardware like that. Sure, they've introduced uh, you know every once in a while. They you know, it's it's a kind of funny looking back at something this old. And how Apple now now they now they've got a watch for us, you know. And uh, I've never used the product myself. I've never used an Android Wear. I think I think in one of the BTLCs I did mention that I had no real plan to ever ever use a watch or smart device of that kind. And still to this day, I'm just not interested in it. It's just. Not something I want to do. I just don't want to get into it. And by the way, the line is still open for any of the members out there. If you wish to join in on this reflecting back on BTLC. Because I would like to have maybe one more person come in before I end the night. So, while I go out there and see if I can get somebody to join me, continue to enjoy the past of BTLC. That on, yeah. I'm thinking that this means that the iPhone 6 is all but confirmed officially to have a larger screen. Because this is yeah, my yeah. thing. They don't want to piss off developers. They really don't want to piss off developers like they did with the iPhone 4 and 4S to the iPhone 5. They really pissed off developers because they had to reprogram every program to fit on the larger screen. They don't want to do that. This is my. This is just an opinion and a theory. They don't want to do that with the iPhone 6. So what they're going to do... And this is just an, a theory and an opinion. This isn't anything. I don't know anything, so so don't take this with you know take this with a grain of salt. But what I think they're going to do is they're going to make the OS stretched stretched out. 
So what they're going to do is they're going to make the buttons make bigger. They're going to make Windows yeah. more stretched out. They're going to they're not going to bother to reprogram all of the different apps. They're just going to remake them automatically. Uh, I wonder how that's going to look. I'm pretty sure with a lot of those apps, though, a lot of them are going to have to be re reprogrammed to. Uh, yeah. I have posted the link. So if you want to join this live chat, jump in. The link is on the Facebook group. Screwed up. Well, here's the yeah. thing. We don't know what the capabilities of Swift is. So we don't know if Swift has some underlying capability to create templates that automatically resize several items within, oh, within a yeah. user interface. That's a good point there. So well, I, we don't know if Swift has something. So I guarantee yeah. you they're going to say, you know, according, you know, now that we have Swift, this new amazing programming language, mm -hmm. we can automatically resize things without you having to do any work. Yeah, it sounds like a Mir project, not a Linux thing. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it does sound like Mirror. It sounds an awful lot like Mirror. It's not the features, it's the implementation. <laughs> I mean, that's you can you can throw out, going back to what we were originally talking about between uh, Linux and uh, and the new OS X. I mean, you can throw every argument at me you possibly want. Uh, the, the the darker toolbar up at the top, which is actually oh, the option. Almighty oh, Apple. Apple. Oh, mighty <laughs> Apple. This is Game of Thrones. I'll send a Dark, midget to blow you. Bar. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, this, is the kind of, this is the kind of crap that we deal with. Every, anytime somebody tries to make a counterpoint to, to claims like this, then it's, oh, you're, you know, you're worshipping yeah. Apple. Which I don't even do. There's a lot of crap about Apple I hate. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit, I like, I'm, I am a <laughs> Apple liker myself. You know, it's kind of For funny me, looking back like at something like this, and how, how stuck up I was when I was fully into the Linux ecosystem, and how I would basically, I don't know, I had that stick way up there where I would make fun of other, of Apple users, of Windows users. And I didn't realize that these things were just, they're just tools. It doesn't matter what OS or how you're running it or what device you're running it on. As long as you're having fun and a good time, yeah. I'm sorry, Brayhawk team, for being such a, such a stuck-up Linux nerd. Remember who's who Apple's fans who who Apple is appealing to. Apple is not appealing to the power user by any means. They're not appealing to the power user. They're appealing to the everyday consumer. consumer if we yeah. understand if we yeah. understand the target, yeah. If we understand the target audience that Apple is trying to reach, then we can probably start to understand some of why they're doing what they're doing and why they're locking users out of certain things. And I mean, to, but I mean, as a side point to that, they're also actually becoming a little bit more open, now, especially with the introduction of third-party keyboards in their, you know, ex ex the extensions within uh, Safari and other apps. You know, you don't have to just share to the ones that they tell you you can share to now. You can share to pretty much anything that will give you the option to share to. You know, they are getting a little bit more open. Well, I guess in good news, Apple has decided to allow us to use Bitcoin. Oh, oh, I did hear that too. Yeah, I not, explicitly. Uh, not explicitly. Anybody use Bitcoin? Anybody use Bitcoin or no, mine Bitcoin? Actually. I have no idea how it works. I, I tried Litecoin. I tried mining Litecoin. You know, Bitcoin it's you it's kind of wallet, funny. Wallet, Looking back at this, how Bitcoin almost reached a thousand dollars, or did it? Or it's 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 been, it's been pretty close. Back when uh, this was recorded. I should have uh, invested in some Bitcoin because I'd probably be sitting really good right about now. And you know what? I'm, and it's, I still don't understand how it works. One of these days, I should dabble into it. Give me a Bitcoin. I don't even know how to get a Bitcoin, so don't send me a Bitcoin because I don't have no way of receiving it or what to do with it. But hopefully in the future, we'll play with that Bitcoin. That's why I stopped mining Litecoin. I was trying Dogecoin, but... Dogecoin? <laughs> yeah, I call it Dodge. Um, my, my, uh, Bitcoin seem, seems like it's a lot harder to mine now, though. Like, well, it takes forever to get one Bitcoin. Because there's only so many out there. Yeah. It's even yeah. worse now. Litecoin was a lot easier, yeah. But yeah, I stopped that right away. 
once I started digging into to Litecoin. <laughs> Well, we've only got a few minutes left. Does anybody have anything, uh, anything at the last minute, anything uh, last second off the top of their head that they want to put out before uh, we start uh, wrapping up the show? Uh, I think um, you should try to plug Patreon real quick. Well, yeah. thank you. <laughs> well I was going to say, I was going to say, I'm sorry, <laughs> Apple. I was a little, I was a little heated in the beginning, but you know what? Since we come from the same operating system, I think we can be friends. <laughs> there you go. Kumbaya, brother. I hope uh, you've enjoyed uh, looking back at BTLC and how much fun we can have together and why I would love to bring it back. I did uh, post a link out there. Um, Only one that joined us tonight was, of course, Tommy in C2010. Thank you for joining me on this live chat tonight. Enjoying it. Making After It great again. Bringing back the podcast. Differently. So hopefully next week I will have a little bit better planning for the episode of the Geeking Out podcast. And we can see who will join us in the live chat. What I'm also going to do is i got to respond to everybody who originally applied you know, to you know, be, become a guest portion of of this, and I'll make it up to you guys. I'm gonna go through that list, send out some emails. So, I kind of want to have a little bit more of a basic topic to talk about, and then we just let ourselves free flow. I like the interaction. But I would also like to thank anybody who watched this cluster mess of an experiment tonight. If you have been here, it was great. Tried to see if I get it. Someone here, even you, Jason, go yet? And just, uh, yeah, God dang it! I know you'd you would love to really chime in on the on the Trump stuff earlier, because you always got good insight with that stuff. I think I've pretty much uh, talked about it, you know, what what I plan to do here. I want to I want to do more podcasting and make this a normal thing. I also got some new stuff coming I also ordered. I also ordered not only did I order the uh my next uh project. I also ordered a, a, some monitor stands to raise my monitors up. So I'm going to eventually get a 4K display in here. Got a new microphone stand. Right now it's on one of these ones that attached to your desk. But I want one on a stand so I can move it around. Because this thing's just... It's always in the way and I have to lean into it. I'd like one where I can kind of freely move it around where it isn't hitting monitors or hitting the mixer. But it, but I don't know. My mind's gone blank. It's kind of kind of boring by myself, actually. I'm all alone. Okay, so with that, you can hit us up at the geeking off at geekingoffpodcast dot com. From there, you can subscribe by the RSS feed or on iTunes. I don't hate you, iTunes users. You got to use what you got to use. And remember to hit up anthrit.com, which I got an email today from Google. They told me that because I don't have HTTPS on my site, that they might start flagging it as an unsafe site which doesn't make any sense because they said it has something to do with the login on it, but the login's for administrators only, so I've got some work to do and some upgrading to fix, but I don't see any purpose for the HTTPS because it's just, it's just displaying content. It's not like I'm getting credit card numbers or anything like that through this website, so I've got to figure out that one. Dang you, Google. Forcing us all to change our ways. 
you know, just because I have an administrator login section. Uh, which is, I, that's what I'm going to do with my Pine 64. I actually got a Pine 64, and I haven't used it yet, but I think I'm going to use it as a device to test and develop the next version of the website because this is just too old. And I really don't want to go with WordPress. I'd rather use the software that I'm using now, but they have a newer version out. Hopefully now it supports SSL. We can make Google happy. It's just more work for me. Oh, why do things have to change? I hate change. Uh, well, I'm just babbling on now. <clears throat> so uh, let's take a look at those votes right now. The poll is still open, and it looks like Cinnamon, surprisingly, has a lead with seven votes. Budgie being the one I wanted to try. I've already kind of tried it. Didn't like its customization. But I have a feeling Cinnamon uh, might be better. Poor, poor open box down here only has uh, two votes. Two. Just two votes. Hmm. So with that, guys, I guess I'm going to end this uh, episode. And we're going to see you next week. I haven't really decided on a time, but I'll, I'll work that out for staying on a consistent schedule so uh, viewers and people who want to join the live chat can join in. So this has been Anthony from Anthwag, folks. And from this time and every time on, Keep on clicking. This is Anthony from Anthware. Signing off.